Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you for joining me. Just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I'm your host, the one they call Brian Glace Gibbs. Look at this photo. What I want you to do, look at this closely. And what it say was, was Willie Boskett Jr. the sign of time? Okay? Well, Willie Boskett Jr. the sign of time. Look at that photo closely. Willie Boskett is a very, very interested individual. And right now is like, was he the sign of time? Was Willie Boskett, like really the first Brian Glaze Gibbs, the first Alpo Martinez, um, the first Wayne Perry, um, the first Baby Sam, Uzi Delroy Edwards. You know, was he the first Howard Pappy Mason? So, you, you know, you, you just sit back and you try to understand, like, how, what, like, was it the sign of time? Google William, Willie Boskett Jr. and see what you come up with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read, like, you know, some of the things about William. William James Bostick Jr., born December 9th, 1962, is an American convicted murderer whose numerous crime committed while he was still a minor led to a change in New York state law so that juvenile as young as 13 could be tried as an adult for murder and will face the same penalty. He had been in either prison or reformatory for all but 18 months since 1971 and has spent all but 100 days of his adult life in custody. He is currently serving a sentence of 82 years to life at Five Point Correctional Facility. So, you know, once again, like I'm asking that question, was Willie, you know what I'm saying, Boskett Jr., was he the sign of time? Was he was like, you know, the sign of time, like things to come, okay? You know, when you sit back and you look at like what? The sign, it is signed there. Like how in the heck at 13, you know what I'm saying? This guy being charged for what? Murder? At 13. What in the heck can a 13-year-old be out there committing such violent act? What caused him to become that violent at such an early age? I'm talking about it. Go deep, man. The story about Willie is very deep. And I remember him when I was a little kid. When, like I'm talking about, he's about a year older than me. So I remember some of the things I was reading about, you know what I'm saying, about him. How did he became so violent at an early age? Even he was talking about like, you know, something that him, you know, being a kid and his sister got into some type of misunderstanding and she told him. And what he did was he took a fork, a kitchen fork, and stabbed his own sister in the tongue. Come on, what is that? How in the heck that young kid became so violent at an early age, okay? They start talking about his early life. They start talking about his father. This is what they say about Boskett. Boskett was born in Harlem. His father, Willie Sr. Butch, killed two people in Milwaukee pawn shop shortly after his son was conceived and was sentenced to life in prison where he earned a degree in computer science and psychology. Butch was released from prison and went on to get a job as a computer programmer for an aerospace company, but he was charged with a crime. He shot his girlfriend and committed suicide to avoid being caught and taken back to jail. So here it is, this dude didn't even know his dad, okay? Boskett had a tra traumatic childhood when his grandfather, when his grandfather was released from prison, what his grandfather did, he raped it, Willie, many times when he was nine years old. His grandfather had him perform anal sex to teach him about girl. Whoa. I'm talking about nine-year-old. You talking about your grandfather? That's how he show you love? That's how he be the man figure in your life? At nine years old, he try and teach his grandson how to have sex, you know, with girls by plinking them in the... Come on, man. See, and that's why we don't understand how some of these kids can end up you know what I'm saying? Like being, like I'm saying, psychologically destroyed, meant to, I'm talking about destroyed. you talking about right now is because of some of the traumatize that happened to him at a young age. I'm talking about, he was getting, you know, I'm talking about bang in his moody, anal sex from his own granddad. 
Come on, man. What part of the game is that? I'm talking about right now, psychologically, you don't think nothing's going to be wrong with that kid? Okay? Now, they went on to say, um, his mother, Laura, has different living boyfriend who beat her. And as a boy, Boskin often jumping to defend her. In one incident, hitting a man with a pipe and slashing him with a knife. And another threatened, I'm going to burn that mf -er up. He also suffered a head injury when he ran out into the street and was hit by a car. This was all before he was 10 years old. So look at everything this guy had been through. I'm talking about, you know, before he was the age of 10, getting sodomized by his grandfather. I'm talking about, you know, every time you look around, his mother was like, you know, in and out, different relationship, had a different boyfriend that was beating her up and he go defend her honor. And the difference is right now, come on, at 10, folks, that's not no life for a kid. So we wonder how he became who he became, how he became, you know, I'm talking about a killer at 13 years old. Let me go on. On March 19, 1978, Bosket, then 15 years old, shot and killed Noel Perez on a train operating on a New York City subway three train doing an attempted robbery near the Harlem 148th Street Terminal Station. Eight days later, Bosket and another accomplice shot dead another man, Mosier Perez, unrelated to his first victim, and another attempt robbery at the back of another three train at 145th Street Station, one station south of 148. In between, Bosket and his company shot at, shot a New York City transit employee working in the Lenox Yard adjacent to the Harlem 148th Street station and committed two other armed robberies, one of them on an A service. Bosket was tried for the murder in New York City Family Court. As the trial was underway, Bosket surprised his own lawyer by pleading guilty for both murder. He was sentenced to a maximum of five years in Goshen Youth Facility. Although prosecutors tried to get a longer sentence, five years was the most they could get under the law at the time. So that's what subsequently changed everything. That's why they started trialing, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, you know, juveniles as adults, especially in New York, because once it's an outcry. I'm talking about this kid, I'm talking about that was mentally disturbed, that was, uh, I'm talking about the range, that had a lot of psychological issue. What happened? I'm talking about who was there to protect this kid? I'm talking about right now, his mother wasn't. His grandfather definitely wasn't. I'm talking about his dad. He didn't even meet his dad. So when you sit back and look at it, who in the heck was there to protect him? So we wonder how in the heck he turned into, quote unquote, a killer. In other words, a monster. Why? Because once again, he was given what? Love? Tough love? If that's, a, yo, if that's love, who want that? I know I wouldn't want that. And that's the difference, folks. We got to be aware of the things that we do. We got to be aware how we treat our kids, especially these young boys, these young girls. Making sure that we'll teach them right from wrong. Teaching them basic principle. Loving them when they need love. Hugging them taking care of them, supporting them, empowering them, encouraging them. Not basically right now, you you know, you on some sick stuff. You know, you come home as a grandfather and you sodomize your own grandchild. You call yourself, you trying to teach him how to have sex with girls at nine years old. Come on. So no wonder, not making anything justified because nothing is justified. All that is Foul. All that is right now, we're destroying what? Our community. We're destroying our kids even before they even have a fighting chance to survive in the world. This man now was corrupted at an early age. Look at him. 82 years to life. Now, he got 82 years to life. For what? You know, because once again, he never had a fair shot. He didn't get a fair handshake. He was destroyed from the very beginning of time. And who can we blame? Who was there to save him? Who was there to help him? Even if he tried to cry for help, nobody was there for Willie Bosket Jr. Nobody. And that's how he turned to the person that he became. 
Was Willie Bosket the sign of time? Was Willie Bosket of the thing to come? Is a sign out there that we can see, that we can recognize, that we can get it under control. Imagine if Willie Bosket would have gotten the proper help that was needed way back when. Could he have been saved? I don't know. I don't know. But the difference is only that I do know, he didn't have a fighting chance. What type of fighting chance did he have? He had a chance in hell. He was set up from the very beginning. From the people that love and supposed to care and nourish him, they destroy him. From a psychological standpoint at an early age. And to me right now, that got to stop. We got a lot of sick people that's out there that are abusing our kids. I'm talking about doing the things they shouldn't be. Some parents shouldn't be parent, let alone grandparent. And how you gonna even trust, you know what I'm saying, your babies around animals? You know, you not knowing who they are. It got to be some type of sign. You know, here it is right now is he ain't just became like that. The grandfather didn't just came like that. It was signs there. I'm pretty sure right now with certain things that he done did to other kids, other nieces and nephew, other grandkids ahead of time that should have been aware. Like, you know, uh, -uh I'm not going to leave my kids around him under any circumstance. I'm not going to leave my son, my daughter. I'm not going to leave nobody around him. Because once again, the writing was already on the wall. Listen, folks, do me a favor. This is my ministry. My name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. And what I'm doing is right now, I'm sharing the good, the bad, the ugly. Hit that like button. Follow me on Instagram, Brian Glaze Gibbs. Get your signed copy of the Beyond Lucky book. If I can change, anybody can change. You know what I'm saying? By ordering it from Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at yahoo.com. I'm talking about right now, what we got to do is, folks, we got to teach one, help one. We got to help people understand exactly like who's who and what's what. And what we have to do is we have to stop this Willie Bostick shit. We have to stop people, you know, right now where it's like, you know, that's what I'm trying to. You know what I'm saying? Willie Boskett. Was Willie Boskett Jr. the sign of time? Right now, here it is. Society created that. His family created that. You know, we create our own monster. And how do we change? How do we stop that epidemic? How do we stop that sick mentality? How do we change people's behavior? How do we keep these pedophiles, these sick individuals away from our kids from destroying them in the very beginning? Because once they get tampered with, once they get destroyed, come on, sometimes it's no coming back. And like I said right now, honestly, he didn't even have a fighting chance at all. Folks, be aware of the people that you're around your kids. Be aware of the company that you keep. Right now, do people add value, they take value away. Once again, my name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. Google Willie Boskett Jr. Thanks for joining in. One love.